This video provides an introduction to the SQL query language. SQL, like the relational model, has been around for decades and supports a many billion dollar market. The first thing you might be wondering is how you pronounce it. Is it SQL or is it SQL? Uh, my friends in industry tell me that SQL is the in pronunciation, so that's the one I'll be using. Now, SQL is supported by all major commercial database systems. It has been around a long time, and it is a standardized language. The standards started out relatively simple, but over the decades, it's really ballooned. Uh, there are currently thousands of pages in the SQL standard, but the essence of the language, which is what we'll be learning in these videos, is still relatively simple. Um, we will be learning primarily the SQL 2 standard, also known as SQL 92, along with some constructs from the SQL 3 standard. When SQL is used, it can be used in a database system interactively through a graphical user interface or a prompt, so you type SQL queries or commands and you get results back, or SQL can be embedded in programs. So the most common use is to embed SQL in programs, but for the demos in our videos, naturally, we'll be submitting queries through a GUI interface. The last thing I wanted to mention about SQL is that it is a declarative language. That means that in SQL you write pretty simple queries that say exactly what you want out of the database, and the queries do not need to describe how to get the data out of the database. The language is also based on relational algebra, and I hope you've watched the relational algebra videos. Now, the declarative nature of SQL leads to the component of the database system called the query optimizer to be extremely important. What the query optimizer does is it takes a query written in the SQL language and it figures out the best way, the fastest way to execute that on the database. Now let's talk briefly about some terminology and the commands that are in the SQL language. There's two parts to the language, the data definition language, or DDL, and the data manipulation, or DML. The data definition language includes commands to create a table. We saw that in a previous video. It also includes commands to drop table and to create and drop other aspects of databases that we'll be learning about in later videos, such as indexes and views. The data manipulation language is the language that's used to query and modify the database. So in the SQL language, the data manipulation language includes for querying the database, the select statement, and then for modifying the database, an insert statement, a delete statement, and an update statement. There are many other commands in SQL for indexes, constraints, views, triggers, transactions, authorization, all of which we'll be learning about in later, in later videos. For now, let's just take a look in a little more detail at the select statement, which is really the bread and butter of the SQL language, and it's what we use to query the database. So the select statement consists of uh, three basic clauses. There's the select clause, the from clause, and the where clause. And the best order to think of these actually is first the from clause, then the where, and then the select. And just the basic idea is that the from identifies the relations that you want to query over. The condition is used to combine the relations and to filter the relations. And finally, the select tells you what to return. Now, if you're familiar with relational algebra, this expression here, the SQL query, is equivalent to the relational algebra expression that you project the set of attributes a1 through an, and then you select, and by the way, it's a different from this select here. In fact, this selection is, corresponds to the where. You select the condition on the cross product of the relations that are listed in the from clause. So that's the equivalent in relational algebra. And uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that, I'm, as you know, the relational query languages are compositional. That means when you run a query over relations, you get a relation as a result. So the result of this select statement is a relation. It doesn't have a name, but the schema of that relation is the set of attributes that are returned. We'll learn much more about the select statement in future videos. In conclusion, the SQL language is very prominent. It's supported by all major commercial database systems. It's been standardized over time. It can be used through programs, can be used interactively, and it's a declarative high-level language whose foundations are based on the relational algebra.